So before the Flint water crisis became a national outrage, it was a local news story. So were Bridgegate and the West Virginia opioid crisis, not to mention Zombie Turtle Kid. I like turtles. I like turtles. <laughs> yeah, we know. Local newspapers deserve some love. So I went all the way to New Jersey to adopt one. Big newspapers like the failing New York Times are not failing? Subscriptions have increased since Donald Trump was elected president. But how are local newspapers faring? One out of three journalists have lost their jobs at American newspapers. There are also places in this country where really there is no local journalism. And that is a terribly scary thing because that's where democracy lives. To find out how bad it's actually getting for local news, I went to New Jersey and sat down with Charlie Cradiville, the strikingly youthful founder of New Brunswick's only local newspaper, The New Brunswick Today. How much of the paper do you personally write? Uh, in any given print issue, I've, I've probably written uh, between you know, 30 or 50 percent of the articles in there. Stop the presses! Half the paper! I do a lot of hard work. I work very hard on this project. Is it weird to be a baby working in a dying medium? It's not easy. Must be hard keeping up on local news in a small town like New Brunswick. Paint still drying, man finds hat and tree. What you got, Charlie? The water director uh, committed suicide because he found out he was potentially under a federal investigation. We're starting with a suicide. Okay, okay. The city never appointed a qualified water director to replace him for the next five and a half years. Oh my God. And eventually a man did plead guilty to public corruption for covering up problems with the drinking water. Charlie Cradiville's out there doing old timey reporting, see? <laughs> Out there with this cute little local newspaper, finding out that all the people have been poisoned. <laughs> and this is why local newspapers are so important. Without old-timey reporting like Charlie's, people in New Brunswick would have no idea that their water was poisoned. Which is why everyone in town is a paying subscriber, right? No, actually, we only have, uh, right now, less than 100 people subscribed to the paper, so... What? How much do your subscriptions cost? It's just $5 a month. $5 a month? $5 a month. Have you thought about ways to incentivize buying subscription to your paper? We're open to it. But since Charlie is too busy being Aaron Brockovich to figure out how to sell papers, I figured I'd do it for him. So I sat down with Gabe Zickerman, a TED Talk dweeb and expert on something called gamification. People know what they should do, but they sometimes need a nudge on how to get between what they say they want to do and what they actually should be doing. How do you do that? One of the easiest ways is hedonism and pleasure. People will always choose the most pleasurable option between a set of given choices. Hedonism. And hedonism isn't just my favorite clothing optional resort. It's a way of life. We've gamified our walking, credit card use, coffee buying, and now even our civic engagement. Gamification is an opportunity to take something like voting or something like participating in other civic activities and make it fun and engaging enough that people may want to do it. But isn't hard work its own reward? Sure. But it was the chance at a real reward that got a California school board election a 46% increase in voter turnout. All it took was a game with a catchy name like Pokemon Go to the Polls. <laughs> Help us out here, Gabe. Basically, the idea is if you vote, instead of just getting a little sticker that says, I voted, uh -huh. you actually get a scratch off lottery ticket. Oh my God, we're all so vulnerable. We all just want a gold star, don't we? Absolutely. Which explains why people will even play boring french fry based games like this and this. Fold It was designed to help scientists figure out a complicated protein structure that had stumped them for 15 years. And guess what happened? 49,000 people playing Fold It in 10 days unlock the protein structure, which is important for developing new drugs to combat HIV. What I'm hearing from you is that people love games. Oh, people love games. They love playing games. They love watching games. That's Wait a minute. People will pay more attention to this interview if I gamify it? Oh, my God. I'm Samantha B. Welcome to the Legally Distinct Pyramid. Here on the show with us today, we have Gabe Zickerman. Hi, Gabe. Hi. Let's play the game. All right. First clue on the pyramid. The laziest birthday gifts. What are pajamas? No. I don't love you. I bought you this. Uh, lottery tickets. Yes. Magic 8-Ball for how to be the only woman in comedy questions. Uh, Fitbit for diabetics. Uh, ways gamification can be used for good. Yes. Pokemon Go for Muslims. 
Pokemon Go for immigrants. What are quick games for the government? Corporate retreats. Games that are bad for society. Can we get a ruling on that? We don't actually have a prize for you. Oh. Folks, that's all the time we have for today's show. Don't forget to get your pets spayed or neutered. See you next time. Having been convinced that gamification totally works, I found myself wondering how it could help the New Brunswick Today's entire staff, Charlie. Right now, less than 100 people subscribe to the paper. If you vote, you actually get a scratch-off lottery ticket. ticket, ticket. Hedonism. Could hedonism save Charlie's paper? I needed to know. Would people be more inclined to spend money if I turned his subscriptions into lottery tickets? I asked my non-millennial correspondents to help out, so they hit the freezing streets of New Brunswick. You get a year-long subscription, and then you also have a chance of winning $500. You want a ticket? All right. And my youngest correspondent took a more modern approach while enjoying a beer. Holy nosies, it's working! Turning subscriptions into lotto tickets did make people more likely to subscribe. Since the switch, the New Brunswick Today has increased its subscription base by 400%, and that number is still rising. A lot of people didn't expect us to last this long. A lot of people thought we would be out of business by now, but we've been able to survive. survive. Maybe with a little luck, a sprinkle of civic engagement, and a healthy dose of hedonism, local journalism will survive. Go to the website on your screen. Everyone wins a prize, even if that prize is just knowing what's in your drinking water. We'll be right back.